Uh, my name is Rodrigo Olave. Uh, I work also uh, with Professor Jim McAdam. Uh, both work uh, for the Agri-Food and Bioscience Institute in Northern Ireland. Um, the title of the talk today is Agroforestry, uh, Sustainable Grassland Management. Um, probably the next uh, slide. It's, it's something that I talked uh, last week, just a, as a, an introduction uh, for you just to know where we work and where we are. Uh, I work for the Agri-Food and Bioscience Institute. We are um, a, a large organization uh, doing research uh, on agriculture in Northern Ireland. Uh, we have uh, seven sites, uh, around 800 staff. Uh, Professor Jim McGarram is the head of uh, AFB Log Gold. This is uh, a plant science grassland uh, branch. I work uh, at AFB Hillsborough, which is an uh, uh, animal science uh, research station, uh, as well as a renewable energy center. <coughs> and by the way, we also have a, a big research vessel that is in the Irish see most of the time. Talk about now agroforestry. Um, a few things about the research program on agroforestry in Northern Ireland, which was very much uh, linked to uh, an agroforestry network in the UK back in 1989. It was funded by uh, several uh, uh, organizations uh, throughout the UK. Uh, in the case of Northern Ireland, by in 1989, I wasn't in, in, in Northern Ireland by that time. I've just uh, been there 10 years. But the, the person that was uh, the main uh, research leader on agroforestry was uh, Jim McGarram. Um, a network of uh, re uh, research uh, experimental trials uh, were set up in Northern Ireland, England, Wales, and Scotland with different species and uh, looking at different uh, uh, farming systems. Uh, over time, we've been working quite close uh, in connection with uh, uh, Queen's University of Belfast also the Farm Woodland Forum, which used to be the, the Agroforestry Forum in the UK, and also CAFRE, which is the College of Agriculture, Food and, Ru and Rural Enterprise in Northern Ireland, uh, and Future Tree Trust. And I personally, I am strongly Im involved in Future Tree Trust, which is an uh, organization working on uh, forest genetics uh, in the UK and Ireland. Uh, we work on uh, seven broadleaf uh, tree species that we think that it can be uh, used for agroforestry, forestry, and other systems. <laughs> and uh, four years ago, uh, AFI also has been a part of Act Forward, which is uh, EU uh EU agroforestry research program uh, funded by the European Commission. <coughs> so, why agroforestry in 1989 uh, in Northern Ireland and in the rest of the UK? Uh, we had, by that time, a, a few problems. Uh, the problems were low biodiversity in Northern Ireland, very uniform habitat. Uh, the landscape was not very diverse. And pollution of uh, waterways and poor soil health. Uh, and also, uh, throughout the UK, um, agroforestry was uh, presented as a way just to increase uh, forest cover. Uh, but that time, uh, Northern Ireland had only 5% of forest cover in total, uh, some places in the UK, except for Scotland, uh, had very low uh, forest cover. 
So then agroforestry was seen as alternative uh, for that. <coughs> so the, the, the big question then is, uh, can agroforestry improve the quality of our grassland in, in Northern Ireland? Because Northern Ireland uh, as a country is very much grassland based in terms of agriculture. This is the uh, agroforestry today, was planted uh, with uh, ash, which is Fraxinus excelsior, um, at 400 trees per hectare, and also um, a few other uh, small uh, experimental trials with other different species. <coughs> What is agroforestry? Agroforestry is a collective name for land use practices where trees are combined with crops and or animals on the same unit of land. Uh, in the case of uh, Northern Ireland, uh, we use a silvo pasture as a main agroforestry option where trees are grown in grazed pasture in regular or a different pattern. <coughs> a few examples of agroforestry, as you probably know, there are, there are many, but uh, those that I think we've been looking at uh, within this program are the main one that we've been working since uh, 1989, which is grazing and uh, uh, following thinning on reseeding. And in the case of us, it's just planting uh, ash trees uh, in, uh, in with grasslands. Uh, we have, uh, well, so uh, there are other types such as pigs in orchards, woodland eggs, uh, parkland, and shelter belts. Uh, I want just to mention shelter belts because uh, Jim Agarama and myself have been also involved in, in, in a research program in the Falkland Island for quite a long time. Uh, the, the Falkland Island is an UK overseas territory, which is in, uh, in the South Atlantic. And uh, the islands, the archipelago is treeless, and the main uh, agriculture, indus uh, uh, agriculture in industry is uh, ship based, but there are no trees. So then we thought that this type of agroforestry would fit in, in that environment. <coughs> I'll tell you now about the experimental trials at AFI, a uh, local in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, as you can see here, this is the, the main site, which is, which is replicated three times. <coughs> in that site is planted at, as I said, uh, at uh, 400 trees per hectare. Uh, and also we have a, a silvo arable uh, experimental demonstration trial, which is planted with a poplar as a alley. And in between rows, uh, we have barley. <laughs> and those systems have been tried with a ship a similar uh, stocking rate uh, in the conventional uh, fashion as is used in Northern Ireland, and also a uh, cattle. <coughs> the other species that we did try in, in, in Northern Ireland was a uh, sycamore. <coughs> Although it's not a native species, but sycamore uh, has been considered as a, as a, a Settle or uh, uh, no, no, fully na uh, native, but it's, it's still very much part of the landscape. <coughs> A sequence of uh, the management since uh, agroforestry was planted in, in at Afi uh, local in 1989. Uh, As you can see, the first slide here is ash uh, trees graze a um, uh, ray grass and a, a tree planted of three, year, uh, three years old. Uh, what I want just to uh, illustrate with this is that the first one is a, a, a density, planting density, 
uh, which is, as I said, 400 trees. It's something that we didn't know in terms of conventional forestry. Uh, what would be the uh, ideal uh, silviculture management for these trees growing uh, in a space, in, in large space? So then that was one a f a factor to investigate. The other one was a protection. Protection, a trees need protection when uh, animals are grazing in, in these uh, systems, uh, which is an extra cost if, this if ag an, agro uh, an agroforestry uh, system uh, is implemented. And also machinery. Uh, the idea was just to uh, keep conventional uh, management of the grassland, which uh, meant that uh, machinery had to, uh, or the trees wouldn't need to allow machinery to work uh, around the area. So as you can see here, normal grass uh, management uh, at 400 trees per hectare. And then we have uh, the stocking rate uh, of sheep uh, grazing around these areas. <coughs> uh, the, the main research uh, question behind uh, trying this uh, system uh, in, in, in grasslands uh, was to compare a pure pasture uh, Again, silver pastoral system planted at uh, 400, trees, uh, 400 trees per hectare. Uh, and also between woodland, conventional woodland uh, of uh, ash trees, which are planted normally at 2,500 uh, 2, trees per hectare. That's the conventional. So <laughs> a typical woodland uh, plantation uh, need needs to be uh, thin. Uh, manage, uh, which is totally different uh, the system when it's implemented as an agroforestry system. <coughs> and uh, with this slide, uh, I would like just to show you uh, the, the land use change over time. As you can see on the right hand side, uh, that's exactly how the grassland did look like. It uh, almost 25 uh, years ago. And then you have the middle one, which is the agroforestry uh, site uh, today, which we think it needs a thinning or open up uh, the canopy of the, the area. And you have on the left hand side, the pure conventional woodland system. Um, After all these years, uh, doing research on agroforestry, uh, some of the benefits uh, uh, of agroforestry that we have uh, found uh, are in terms of uh, the economics, uh, extend the grazing season, uh, in, other words, in other words, having a, an agroforestry system dries the soil, and finally, environmental benefits. Those are good for wildlife, keeps uh, nutrient out of uh, water courses, good for soil health, and better animal welfare and performance. I'll show you now a few examples of results that we now think that those are the main, uh, the main benefits. <coughs> In terms of performance and management, uh, as I said before, uh, the plan was just to manage the grassland as conventional, only in, in incorporating trees in, in the system. And what we realized, uh, uh, or what we came out from our research, is that the basic payment was unaffected uh, during the, uh, uh, the agroforestry. And also, uh, for the for the first 13 years after planting, uh, there was no uh, differences in grass production between uh, pure uh, grassland compared to uh, agroforestry. So 
in other words, so we didn't uh, we didn't need to thin out or remove trees to have similar grass uh, uh, grass production between both systems. So that was a benefit. And also, at the year 13, we decided just to remove some of the trees to open up canopy and to allow grass uh, growth uh, to perform as it was a pure uh, grassland uh, for, for sheep production. <coughs> At the year 13 then, uh, uh, one of the uh, products of this uh, uh, woodland, or small uh, woodland, was to get a material for Harley stakes, which is a uh, hurling sport, and which is a very valuable um, material. And those uh, was uh, sold at uh, uh, almost uh, 240 uh, pounds per cubic meter. And in total, a small, almost two hectares of, of an agroforestry uh, plantation with uh, 400 trees per hectare give us uh, around 921 pounds per hectare. <coughs> so that was a benefit. And, and also some of the other material, we thought that, for example, it could have been used for biomass for fuel. On a 13 years base, yeah, uh, at the end of the uh, 13, uh, at, at year 13. Is this the data which you think it works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because it, it, it's, it's only an experimental area, uh, we need just one person, a chainsaw man, just to do the job. Uh, the other benefit, as I, as I mentioned, uh, it is the uh, extended grazing season under agroforestry. That is a very important one for us because we think that if we assume, for example, 40% soil moisture content at as a cut a, a, a cutoff point, then we think that we had about seven, uh, 17 weeks longer season under agroforestry in, 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 in autumn and, and, and spring. Uh, which is very clear there. So, in other, uh, in other words, that would give us more time to keep sheep uh, in the open, <coughs> grazing. <coughs> the other benefit is uh, environmental biodiversity. As you can see here, when we compare the three systems, grassland, ash, agroforestry, or silver pasture, and ash woodland, in all the cases, uh, ash uh, silver pasture, uh, we found that uh, biodiversity increases in terms of spiders, birds, and beetles. Um, it's interesting here that, for example, uh, for birds, uh, agroforestry is even uh, uh, bigger than ash uh, 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 than woodland. Yes, no, no, bird species. Not individual. No individual. So uh, another environmental benefit is uh, carbon sequestration. As I said the other day, although uh, we found that there are no difference differences uh, uh, in carbon in soil carbon pools between grassland and uh, woodland and uh, agroforestry. Uh, the, the carbon is stored in the above ground material. Uh, when that is incl included in uh, as a whole system, then it's more positive than uh, a, a grassland. So in total, we found that, for example, the total carbon in wood is about uh, seven, uh, 77 tons per hectare, which is the equivalent of 3.7 tons of carbon per hectare per year which is higher than grassland and higher than uh, woodland. <coughs> and at the bottom, you, you can see just the, uh, what we did just to calculate these uh, carbon uh, pools uh, in the agroforestry system. It's very expensive, very time consuming, but it's something that we thought that uh, was needed to, to be done. <laughs> to 
demonstrate that, that benefit. Oh yes, yeah, that, that's good, 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 yeah, yeah. well spotted, well good. <coughs> yeah, it's interesting because uh, uh, at that time we, we did assume uh, carbon in the root system. Uh, we did assume as a 20% uh, of the total uh, above uh, biomass as a carbon content, uh, 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 taking into consideration the whole uh, tree. Including root system and above ground. <coughs> so th now, through another project, we are now uh, estimating a, a carbon below ground. A preliminary res a data suggests that it's a lot much than 20%. Uh, I think preliminary data is given us about 30, 35%. That is. 35. Yeah. <laughs> it's not published uh, yet, but uh, it will be published maybe during the year or something like that. And uh, this is very, this is in terms of policy. Uh, in terms of policy, in 1989, there was no uh, uh, a policy in place to encourage farmers to take up the system. In, in Northern Ireland and throughout the UK. There were, there, there were a few things, uh, environmental schemes, where you can justify planting trees in, in an agroforestry design. <coughs> but uh, successfully, in Northern Ireland, uh, today in 2007, um, there is new, uh, a new uh, scheme to encourage the establishment of agroforestry in the country under the new environmental farming uh, scheme, uh, which, is, is which is under the Rural Development Programme, which is in part funded by the uh, European Commission. That was a major a step forward for implementing agroforestry in Northern Ireland, because it took more than 25 years just for policy to realize the benefits of agroforestry. <laughs> uh, how it, 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 it works. So the details of the measures are uh, the option is uh, the establishment of an agroforestry system uh, which the objective is to uh, provide carbon sequestration benefits. Uh, this option will contribute to biodiversity, uh, night and uh, cycling, water quality, uh, and the idea is that will uh, the integration of trees with crops or livestock uh, on on a on a same uh, piece of land. Uh, the option payments for any farmer uh, to get the subsidy is at year one they receive uh, more than fifteen hundred uh, pounds per hectare, and in year two and five. 16 pounds per hectare each year, which is a, 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 a very good, we think it's a, it's a, it's a very good, uh, interesting uh, scheme for farmers to, to, to get involved in. <coughs> These are the list of uh, species that farmers, if they take the scheme, are uh, allowed to plant uh, in as an agroforestry system. <coughs> <coughs> we have about 17 tree species, uh, most of them native uh, broadleaf species, except for uh, Scott pine, and the other one is uh, aspen or uh, poplar or something like that. Uh, well, so and 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 also one uh, known uh, native, which is sycamore. Uh, the ash is is a pity because. Uh as you probably know, uh, ash was uh, attacked by a disease, which is uh, Chalara. That is a continental Europe disease that came over uh, these islands, uh, Ireland and, and, and Britain. Uh, so uh, because of that, uh, it's not yet approved as a species that can be planted by farmers in Northern Ireland. 
<coughs> eh, it's, it's, uh, in the case of us, it's, it's, it's very it's sad too because we've been doing a lot of research using ash as a potential tree species to be planted uh, in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, we know that uh, there are other species that are suitable, but uh, it needs research in terms of how they will behave in an agroforestry uh, system, uh, such as oak, and also the rotation, the, the, uh, the growth rate of this species is different. We thought that ash and sycamore were had more potential because they have a quicker a growth rate compared to oak and other species there. <coughs> For those that uh, wishing to take the uh, scheme, uh, the overall target for, in this case, for the Department of Agriculture in Northern Ireland was uh, to have uh, 50, 52 hectares. <coughs> in the trench one, uh, we had, or the Department of Agriculture had uh, 24 applicants, uh, which is the equivalent of uh, 32 hectares, uh, 64 uh, uh, percentage. <laughs> uh, within those uh, 44 applicants, in this first year of the scheme, uh, all those uh, were farmers, uh, which is a very encouraging thing because we think that with that group of farmers, we can do more to encourage others to take the scheme uh, in the future. Uh, and interestingly, the policy leader from the Department of Agriculture said, hopefully we can ensure that these uh, 44 applicants make a success of agroforestry and uh, spread the word. Uh, it will encourage further uptake in the next uh, trench, which probably is going to uh, be in 2018 and 19. Thanks very much for your attention. As you can see there, those guys there are waiting for uh, an agroforestry. <laughs> it's quite obvious that uh, sheep like having trees around. Thanks.